So that's a new inhabitant of the 10 gallon nano tank. Hey, what's up, Reverse? Today we're gonna talk about feeding. Now, I wouldn't say feeding is a controversial topic. Actually, it is pretty controversial, but I tend to feed very heavy. I could get away with this because I had been feeding heavy right off the start, so my bacteria level and the macroalgae refugium is able to handle the load. At the moment, I'm still dealing with zero nitrate and zero phosphate, which is not good. You always want a little bit of excess so you know that your tank is using enough. Because when you're at zero, you don't know if you have just enough for the tank or if it's really severely depleted. So you always want just a little bit. With that said, I have three methods that I use to feed my tank, and here they are. Hey, what's up, Reefers? I'm gonna show you the first way I feed my fish. This is the way I use most often. I'm gonna remove the mesh top. And usually I use a mash top because I got jumpers as fish. For quick feeding, there's two food that I really use. Number one, I use the Ocean Nutrition Prime Reef. I've been using this for a long, long time. All my fish really like it. And if you look at the ingredient, um, actually the crude protein is really high compared to other dry food. Not sponsored in any way, I just really like this product. The second one I use is the Nios Wild Goji's, a uh, funny name. Marine Depot actually sent this to me to try out and the fish actually really like it and it's really easy to feed. So I've been using this as well. So let me show you how the fish react to these food. Prime Reef, it's a flake, right? And I usually just grab a handful like this and then take a look at the fish reaction, ready? And I'll wait for the wave to come up and I'm gonna dip my hand in and release. Whoa. And that's actually a lot. Usually I don't eat, feed that much. Usually Emily feeds this much. Stop but, blaming me. <laughs> take a look at all the fish kind of going wild, huh? Even the gobies. Look at the, look in the back, the gobies back there. Even those. They look for them and they dart out to go for the food. And usually these Yasha gobies don't venture that far out from the barrel, but for these flakes, they'll make an exception. Now let's take a look at the Nios Wild Goji, the, this is slightly different. This is the pellet forms. I'm not sure if you can see it here, but I'm gonna grab a pinch like this. And I'll just, again, dip my finger in here and just release them. And I like to dip my finger in and release the fruit because like, otherwise the fruit may remain in the water surface and get sucked into the overflow right away. And that kind of defeats the purpose. I'm just creating um, excess nutrient and the fish and corals are not really benefiting. So even, the, even the grande is piley grabbed a flake and is eating. How crazy Whoa. is that? So guys, that is how I usually feed my fish. Not in that volume, a little bit less, maybe uh, half that. But I'll feed that every day that I'm not using my second or third method of feeding, which I'm gonna show you next. Let's go. The next day. All right, reefers. So for the second method I used to feed my tank is broadcast feeding. I pretty much exclusively use the Reef Nutrition product. Now you may be wondering, oh, is it because you're sponsored? Yes, I am. But uh, before I got sponsored by them, I actually won a bunch of the products through a Reef Club raffles and I really loved them and they actually lasted me for a long long time and then they reach out and I was like okay yeah of course like because I really like the product. That aside let me just kind of walk you through what I feed. This is the line of products I got from them. Phyto feast, oyster feast, ROG, arctic pots and mysis feast and I line them up in order of size. Phyto feast and oyster feast they're the finest particle and I feel like they're the most versatile in terms of feeding your tank because phyto feast, oyster feast they go well with clams, gorgonians and a lot of different corals with smaller mouth so they'll all take advantage of it. Also Kopi Pot as well. So these two, I highly, highly recommend. These are like my go-tos. ROE, they're kind of in between the Arctic Pots and Mysis Feast in terms of size. So this is kind of in between some corals and uh, fish. Fish goes after these as well, but they're not as fine as these first two. Moving on to the right, we got the Arctic Pots, which has almost the same size as the uh, Cyclops Easy that's, that's really popular. So some of the uh, Gorgonians and um, the smaller mouth uh, corals, so take advantage of the Arctic Pots as well as fish. And Mysis Feast, now these are chunky. These are the PE Mysis, if I remember right. And basically they're just in liquid form versus frozen form. So these are the good stuff. Well, I also want to let you know how I feed these. So basically I feed all of these products at least once a week and I feed pretty heavy as you will see. But on the off week, sometimes I only feed two products and that's the Phyto Feast and the Oyster Feast that um, a lot of animals in my tank will really take advantage of. Um, and then on those off weeks, I will target feed the corals, which is my third feeding method. But for now, let me show you how I feed my tank using the broadcast feeding method. All right guys, so in front of the tank right now, let me first shut off the return pump. This way, the products stay in water. I, I noticed that I kept the power head on, so the product gets cycled through the water. But first and foremost, let's um, make sure I mix up the phyto. Phyto is usually the first thing I add. 
and I wait for the flow to kick up and I just squirt them in. Now take a look at the clam as I do this. You see that the clam is going to react to it. I said the clam is going to react to it. <laughs> I Ow. said the clam is going to react to it. Anyways, the clam is going to react to it. But we're going to move on. We're going to keep going. I like it. We're going to keep going. Uh, here's oyster feast. That's the second largest one. Just keep, take an eye, keep an eye out on the clam though. And we'll add some when the flow is high. And you see them going in. And you see some of the fish started getting interested. And next up, we're going to do our yi. Our yi is the one that the fish actually pick at as well. And I'm wait, waiting for flow and add a little bit. This one I go a little bit easy because these are a little chunkier and you'll see the fish going after them. And then as we keep moving on, we got the Arctic pod. I just kind of dose them right into the water current. Now you notice that fish actively pick at the Arctic pods. So these are starting to come to the size that the fish actually react to. And finally, for mice of shrimp. <laughs> finally, for mice of shrimp. These I add sparingly because these are larger chunks. You see how the clam is kind of like shutting, shutting, like closing up and stuff like that. Usually, when you do this, especially a couple times in a row, um, that means they're taking in. Look at the small one as well. Small one's kind of reacting as well. They're kind of taking in the phytos. Look at that, look at that. See the big one? So that's when you know they're eating, they're actively kind of getting getting the uh, the food and the phytos, the oyster feeds into the body. And now also t pay attention to what the fish picks at. They go after the slightly larger chunks. I think starting from our yi, they can take. And look, even the yashikobi in the back is kind of going nuts a little bit. <laughs> we scared them, but look at the, the crab. These crabs are bold. They smell something in the water, they're waiting for the food to drop and they go after them. But usually during this mix, you start seeing some of the corals, especially the mushrooms are closing up into a cup like this to help them catch. Same thing with the fat dendro, usually the fat dendro um, with this kind of feeding, able to catch some of these mice or shrimps and uh, they should be good for a couple days. Same thing with Bob, Bob is surprisingly good, the Aptasia at catching food by itself. But I will let this run. Notice how we turn off the return pump and it's gonna be off for about 10 minutes and usually I'll turn it off one more time. So for about 20 minutes, the water in the display tank just kind of keeps cycling in, giving all the fish, all the corals a chance to really capture all the food. And after 20 minutes, the water is gonna start going through the entire system and it will in turn feed the refugium and stuff like that. So I do this kind of heavy feeding sometimes twice a week. But other times for me, I just do this once a week and then I'll do uh, just phytos and oyster feast uh, the other time of the week uh, and kind of like partner that up with target feeding my corals, specifically the fehedendro and the uh, sea anemone because like usually they, 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 they like eating chunkier fruit, not just like this because like this way they catch some but not a lot. So that is how I broadcast feed my tank. The second method. Next, I'm gonna show you how I target feed corals and what kind of food I actually use for target feeding. Talk to you in a few days. Three days later. All right, Reefers, here's the third method that I use to feed my fish. And for that, I typically use the LRS Reef Frenzy. And that's another secret weapon that I use, but check this out. Did you see these awesome looking magnets? Woo! Also, shout out to Mr. Billy Pipe. The second ingredient I use is Reef Roy. Okay, so I mix up the LOS Reef Frenzy with the Reef Royce and I use this huge, long turkey baster to suck up some food. And I turn off the flows already, so there's no flow. First thing I usually feed is actually the Nenui, because I know the clownfish is going to go after whatever it is I feed. So I'll feed the Nenui first. Alright, mix up. I'm going to feed the fat head dendro right behind the clam right there. And I do that because like the fan dendro actually eats pretty quick. So usually I can get maybe two or three rounds of um, feeding in before I stop this entire thing. Meaning that they'll kind of pull the food into their stomach a couple times as I feed the other corals. There you go. That's a big chunk. <laughs> and sliding over here, we're going to feed the acans. And the tentacle is not totally open yet, but they're starting to because they smell the food in the water. But we'll do the best we could for now. 
And if some food escaped, that's totally fine. The fish and other inverts just gonna take it. So other things I wanna feed are the kryptonized candy cane, but again, the tentacle is not quite open yet. So we'll see if they hold on to the food. Yeah, we may have to circle back to these guys because now that they smell food, um, they're gonna start opening up, opening up more. Now, one interesting thing I feed is actually the zoas. Uh, certain zoas I got, they have pretty long tentacles, like these guys right here, and they do tend to grab onto food. Maybe not today. Oh, some of them are closing up. Same to Sunny D. And I'll have the same zoas at different parts of the tank and depending on how high up, how strong water flow, they behave differently. Some would react to food like these, but others would not. Okay, another thing I like to feed are the frog spawn. Some of you guys ask, oh man, how, how come your frog spawn and your phileas in general grow, tend to grow a lot faster? Um, because I feed them. I feed them pretty heavily. Uh, as you can see, some of them are growing out of the water. I cut the return flow, so the water level is a little bit lower. So they kind of peek out of water a little bit, but I do like to give them some uh, fine food as well. Most of them being mice shrimp, because they're probably the right size for the mouth. I don't think they will take like large chunks of food, so I try to avoid those. For those, I'll just feed them to the anatomy. And you see down here, you see how the kryptonite candy cane is kind of pulling the food into the mouth now? Not really. Follow me real quick upstairs. Come on. So at least once a week, I'll also feed the uh, budget nano tank, mainly the, uh, the anemone back here and here. For these guys, I use chunkier fruit. Right there. Oh. It's not coming out. Oh, there we go. And the, these um, Bally Mini Max carpet, they also take food. I can hit them, hit them up as well. Oh, that's right, that's a new fish right here. Which one? The green thing at the bottom. So that is the walking dendro. Basically, they can it actually walks around the tank looking for food. Boom, there you go, and we'll feed the rough flower anemone. And then got some extra food. Let's see if the fish is scared. Yeah. I'll feed the frog spawn as well. And that's it. That is how I feed my tank at least once a week this way, target feeding. Um, as you see before, I will do broadcast feeding once or twice a week, depending on if I do the target feeding or not. And I'll feed flakes um, usually every day, um, just like tiny pinch, nothing like, as much as like I, I showed before. Oh, look at little fish is eating. Little fish is eating. Whoa. Oh, look at that. So that's a new inhabitant of the Tang Island Nano Tank. And I'll do a proper video introducing this little guy a little bit later so on. Let's do it. Keep eating <laughs> and playing the food. Out. But this this dude is tiny. This is like about. Appreciate your food, man. <laughs> three quarter of an inch. This tiny little guy. Super cute. But there's a whole story behind this little dude, and I'll share with you guys a little bit later. All right, for now, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to leave a thumbs up on the way out so I know what kind of content you like. And I'll see you guys next time. If you don't like, just unsubscribe. What? But I can't get them off without breaking the rack. <laughs>